here on the afternoon show. Kevin Cole with you. It's KEXP Seattle. And joining me right now, all the way from Iceland, Samaris. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's great having you here. We'll chat in a bit, but uh, how about a couple songs?
Reise in der Reise Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Samara on the afternoon show, KEXP. Jofrieder Auslong. Dottie, welcome to, uh, to KEXP. Welcome to Seattle. Thank you. Thank you. It's great having you here. Um, I've seen you in, uh, in Iceland at Kex Hostel at a decommissioned power plant doing your normal <laughs> Iceland airwave <laughs> showcase a couple months ago in the Netherlands, but it's awesome having you here uh, at our home in Seattle. Thank you so much for having us. And uh, and thank you as well, because you aren't doing a Seattle date. You are just uh, mm-hmm. stopping over, so you uh, agreed to like do a layover to uh, to perform for KEXP yeah. listeners. It's actually, um, it, for us, it made so much sense to do it, because when we were just beginning to play ever in um, 2011, KEXP was one of the first platforms that, w- that contacted us and at Iceland Airwaves and, and kind of, you know, gave us a, a nice sort of push and we've been in touch since, and you know, every, every time you come over and such. So it's a great honor to finally be here in your home. Yeah, hometown. it's been fantastic uh, kind of partnership. And um, so uh, you came to our attention first in 2011. I think you had won like an Icelandic battle of the bands or something. Yep. Um, KXP listeners will be familiar with your music. We've played it a lot, but they probably don't know a lot about you. Had you been together for a while before then? Mm, we started in 2011, in January. It was right around Oslo's birthday. How old were you then? Oh, S- eight, 18, 17 years old. I was 16, so you must have turned 18. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 18. Oh, yeah. And we just wanted to have something, you know, we wanted a new activity. We were all bored, yeah, and that's why we started it. And Ausla and I said we wanted to, there were two things we wanted to do, and dance and wear costumes. Um, and so we contacted Todd and said, can you help us make some techno music? <laughs> <laughs> and then it actually came as a surprise to all of us that we kind of clicked. And since then we've just been doing this and we've been enjoying it. And it's been an amazing creative outlet for all of us. Nice. Well, the music's beautiful. And uh, the last album, Silke Dranger. Yeah, Silke Dranger. <laughs> a little <laughs> bit more harsh. <laughs> Silke Dranger. Uh, one of my favorite albums of last year. Just a great late night, early morning record. Feel transported every time I listen to it. Always takes me to uh, a better place. And uh, your lyrics are all from 19th century Icelandic poems, right? Yeah. yeah. From both of, the, uh, both of your records? Yes, actually. We started doing that because we were working in a studio in, in Dottis Music School. And um, we wanted... We needed inspiration for lyrics, so we started out just trying to sing them, the, those old poems that were in the studio. In the were book. you originally going to write your own lyrics? Yes, yeah, that yeah. was the in- intention. Yeah, but then, yeah. actually, we, we just fell in love with these lyrics, and, and we decided to keep on kind of developing the idea. And since then, we've been doing a lot of digging, and we've been yeah. kind of, you know, extracting, from, and use, like, kind of exploring the, the, um, the whole public domain um, are they all from a certain era, from a certain yeah, style? Yeah, most of them are romantic, but that's just yeah. because it's our preference. Yeah, yeah. We really like that. Um, are the lyrics really important? Um, they can. A, lyri- a good, you know, good lyrics can definitely 
boost the quality of a song and it can it can also bad lyrics can ruin a good song <laughs> otherwise <laughs> so um but we we like this sort of um because what we're doing is mysterious and we like to kind of add to the mystery and yeah like yeah even we it's actually um been amazing how well we have been received by foreign foreign uh, audience that cannot understand anything that we're saying it seems that it's not necessarily um you know you don't need to understand it yeah, with great music, you don't need to to know the lyrics or know the language necessarily. You can feel the emotional quality in the uh, delivery and then and the seems, melody. It also seems to kind of be more people enjoy it in kind of similar way as they enjoy instrumental music. Mm -hmm. And that's also been very interesting for us to explore because we had no idea that was the result. Yeah. Um, to what extent has been raising the awareness of some of these poets mm. uh, been important or maybe a nice kind of byproduct? It's been... I feel like the way I see it, it's been kind of um, this has been kind of a bridge between younger and older generations mm -hmm. because the feedback we got originally from young people was that they were surprised that they liked the poems so much, and then the feedback that we got from the older people was that they were surprised that they liked the music so much. And are these poems known uh, in Some Iceland? Some of them are, yeah, but others are completely unknown. Cool. Um, how about the poets themselves? Uh, who who are mm. the poets? Oh, um, we've done some research on that and. One of our favorites, he was actually a, a drunk. <laughs> he, was, um, <laughs> he wrote beautiful love poems to his uh, wife that actually parted with him because of his problem. And, and they're actually very, because that was in the, in the you know, 19th century, or maybe even older, it was maybe 18th century. Um, that was very, um, he was very uh, kind of dramatic, and he uses a lot of uh, words for describe comparing his love to you know, natural elements and stuff like that that we find very interesting. Um, that's one of them, the cool. drunk, the poetic <coughs> drunk. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> others are, some of them are scholars, they were teachers, and, mm -hmm. and others are, are famous, famous poets, um, kind of romant in the Romantic era. So what are you going to do when you run out of poems? We are, <laughs> <laughs> the chances are you never will, because <laughs> in the Icelandic language we have, you know, the catalogue is, yeah. is immense. I don't think we'll ever run out. <laughs> do you ever envision uh, straying from that concept and writing? Yes, certainly. Yeah. I mean, we started as it started as an experiment, and it would be a shame for us to stop experimenting. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're definitely thinking what to do next, and we've considered everything. You know, um, writing our own lyrics, doing gibberish lyrics, um, getting other people to come, and uh, trying out other languages, and you know, everything. Ah, that also. We'll see what we <laughs> what we end up <coughs> doing, but we'll definitely do what we think is going to sound the best. Cool. What about the music then? Do you start with the poem and then set the no, music around no. it? First, the music. Okay. And is the music part collaborative? Yes, it's very collaborative. Um, though this does the production, so he always has the final touch. Mm -hmm. But all the songwriting we do together. Now, it's interesting instrumentation. Dottie's playing, uh, you know, electronics and beats and program music. Uh, uh, Uslug is playing clarinet, and uh, and you guys are a three-piece. Mm -hmm. You don't hear clarinet much uh, in modern music. Mm -hmm. And especially not in shame. beautiful electronic <laughs> music. It's just, it sounds so great. That was also one of the things that we just stumbled upon. Um, Ausla and I are both clarinetists, and we met through playing the clarinet. So when we were trying making songs in the studio, actually, Ausla was first going to just sing yeah, play <laughs> or play the flute, which he doesn't really know how to do, <laughs> um, or play some kind of a percussion. It was all very, very, um, I don't know, and there were many ideas in the <laughs> beginning. So actually, we were just were writing the song together, and we said, hey, I, I have my clarinet in my backpack. Should I try uh, write a melody on top? And we did it, and it sounded, we were actually so shocked at what we found out because it was actually just like a synth. It was like um, when you put a few effects on it and, you know, it just sounds like a really beautiful sine wave synth. It's beautiful, um, but it also gives sort of a warmth, like there's a real breathy quality exactly. to your music uh, yes. through your vocals and through the clarinet playing and the breathing. You can hear that mm -hmm. in the electronic. You know. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's super cool. Um, I know that you have some classical background. Uh, how does that or has that come into play in terms of uh, creating the kind of electronic music that you create? Um, it, it actually, it's hard to say because I think a lot of the influences are all like, sub, you know, kind of subconscious. Um, but the most kind of, the most interesting thing for me is, is always the sort of the debate between me and Totti, who, who hasn't, who has actually kind of um, refused to have any classical influence on whatever he does because it says it's too, you know, it's too, um, 
kind of there are too many rules and it's too limiting. But um, so for us, kind of writing music together is a conversation where we're constantly fighting and arguing about you know whatever we like and whatever we don't like and and such. And so I think that the classical element it's very hard to exactly pinpoint what it is. But um, I think it's definitely in there in the songwriting and and in the way we kind of think about chords because we've had to we've had to do a lot of harmony and, and mm -hmm. counterpoint and such. So, I mean, it must have an effect, even though at the moment it's very hard to say exactly what it is. Samer is live on the afternoon show here on KEXP, Silke Dranger. <laughs> I'm trying to do it really hard now. No, you're now. good, you're good. <laughs> um, is the, uh, the newest album, there was an album before, a self-titled album that uh, combined the first two EPs. Mm -hmm. And the, the two songs we just heard were from the new album. Yes. And you're going to play a couple now from the... Uh, exactly. The, the Playing two EPs. songs from the first EP, we have uh, one from the first and another from the second. Yeah. Very cool. And um, before we get to those, are you working on new music yet? Yes, we are actually. Um, we're kind of doing it every now and then whenever we, ha we have time and everyone's in the in the right mood. And and um, but so far, what we have come to find is <laughs> we're writing all these kind of melancholic trap beats with a tropical influence. Uh, I won't <laughs> say any anything else; it will change drastically. But that's yeah. what we got at the moment. Cool. Samara Slav on KEXP. Want to uh, go for it?
Samaras Live on the Afternoon Show, KEXP, sounding absolutely beautiful. Two songs from the uh, the first self-titled release. What were those songs called? The first one was called Solkwerf, number two, and then the second one is called Goda Tungl. Well, thank you so much. Um, thanks for doing a special KEXP session. You're not doing a Seattle show. Well, next time. <laughs> yep. On your way to L.A., doing a, an L.A. show and a New York show. Are those open to the public? Yes, to, um, we need to RSVP. Okay. It's a promo and stuff. Yeah. Well. So um, I'll post a link to the real time playlist so our uh, listeners in LA and uh, New York can, uh, can go see you. And hopefully we'll have you here this fall for Reykjavik Calling. It would be great. That would be so nice, yeah. Uh, Samaras live on the afternoon show. Jofrida uh, Oslug Dati, thank you so much. And a uh, huge thanks to uh, Jim, Justin, Scott, and Karina on our online crew. We'll have videos and photos up of the session soon. Kevin Suggs on sound, Maddo uh, operating the board, uh, Alexi and Larry Rose. Thanks tons for helping. helping. And again, it's uh, Samaras live on KEXP. Thank you. Thank you. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.